Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Lower Decks, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 3, Episode 2, The Least Dangerous Game. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Lower Decks. So I'll have to start with the spoiler warning for Lower Decks up to Season 3, Episode 2. If you have not seen up to this point, you will not want to watch this video. Otherwise, some things will be spoiled for you. So, this was a pretty good episode, pretty decent episode of Lower Decks. I don't think this episode was amazing or anything. It never it didn't really stand out as being like a really great episode. I wasn't like laughing hysterically or anything like that. But it was it was fine. It was solid. It, there was nothing really wrong about it. That, like it maybe got a little tad bit too silly for me at times, but you know. That's Lower Decks for you. <laughs> um... So, yeah, so I thought this was just another solid episode of Lord X. So, there were two storylines, mainly, in this episode. One was a Boimler and one was a Mariner. And the, uh, let's see, Tendi was kind of a side character in Boimler's storyline. And then Rutherford was a side character in uh, Mariner's storyline. Which... It's great. As I said, I was hoping they would change the format up a bit. Season 1, they pretty much every episode was Boimler and Mariner went off on an adventure was the A plot, and the B plot was Tindy and Rutherford doing something. Now, they did switch it up a little bit in Season 2. They still fell back on that format a couple of times. Uh, but, yeah, I'm wanting to get away from that format entirely, and so having two plots that like, somewhat pretty equal one featuring Mariner, one featuring ten, um, Boimler, and then Tenny Rutherford was split between them. Like, that's more, that's interesting. Um, so let me start with the Boimler storyline first, because I think I actually like this one a little better. Um, this was kind of, it was just like the, um, the Jim Carrey movie called Yes Man, where he decides to say yes to everything and his life gets so much better. Although, kind of gets worse <laughs> at one stage in this story. But, um, so yeah, that part of it I thought was kind of unoriginal. And this fact that this, this bullying dude, I think they showed him in previous seasons, all of a sudden the captain is a bit ridiculous. But <laughs> anyway, they say it's because he says yes to everything. So Boimler like goes around saying yes. He ends up like doing this like spring ball thing uh, with Shax, but Shax then likes him better, and then he does this other like being a model for this art thing, and this guy likes him better. So it's all working out for him, and he's in the bar talking to Tendi about he's a, a new Boimler and totally different with this like huge ass like scary looking alien that kind of looks like the predator comes up to him and is like excuse me can you let me hunt you <laughs> and he's like um no thanks i think we'll pass on that one and boy was like yes <laughs> uh I actually thought this was pretty funny, except for, especially when Tindy is like, I know you said you were going to say next, yes to the next person to ask you a question, but maybe, you know, just give this one a pass and do it the next time. And, and Boimler is like, you know what, that sounds reasonable. It is what the old Boimler would say. <laughs> and, then, and then he starts hunting him and, like, going crazy. I can't remember what the dude's name was, but he was like, I thought it was pretty funny when um, he ran into uh, Captain Freeman when he was being hunted. He's like, help, help, I'm being hunted. Like, hunted on my ship? No, you know, absolutely not. And then he mentioned that guy's name. It's like, oh, him. Oh, yeah, sure. I had a drink with him. He was pretty cold. Nah, you're all good. He can hunt you. <laughs> and, yeah, that part was a little bit silly. But I guess it makes more sense once you realize the twist ending. Although he still, like, freaking apparently did permanent nerve damage to his shoulder. I wonder if um, they're actually going to, like, maintain that. Or just that's something that would be hand wave away. I, I reckon it will be hand wave away because this is lower decks. It's more of a not that serious of a show. But anyway. <laughs> um, and so... Yeah, <laughs> it was. I will say it was funny 
one Boimler is like, I'm the hunter now, ah, oh, you were unleashed the Boimler, and he had this huge, like, rant about how he's the hunter now, and then the guy just, like, they were spared it, and, and, like, stabbed him with the spear while he was monologuing. Uh, and then, of course, the twist ended up being that, um, he was just, you know, he wasn't, he was doing catch and release, but he, he respects life, but he was just hunting for fun, which I think is a nice little twist because it's making fun of the hunters who go out and do the same thing. <laughs> um, and it's like, oh, we respect life or whatever. We're not going to kill them. We're just, you know, going out and trying to, you know, make making them terrified and acting like we're about to kill them but <laughs> and maiming them but um and how he like takes a picture it's kind of reminded me of you know the dentists who go out and, and, <laughs> and do the hunting and take pictures of it and post it everywhere um so that was funny I did appreciate that, and I like how he was like, you know, I even said to Bone, like, you know, if you're gonna go, go be the hunter now, you shouldn't just stand there and tell me you're gonna be the hunter. <laughs> oh my god, and then, but of course this had got him huge high standing, and, and Captain Freeman thought better of him, so still the yes thing was working for him, and he was acting like... The yes thing totally worked out for him. So I wonder if he's going to continue doing the yes thing, but I doubt it. Again, I think this is more of a singular episode thing. So, so yeah, that episode, that storyline was a bit silly, but it was mostly funny. Now, the Mariner one, this one was a bit more silly, I think, but again, still pretty solid, pretty, still pretty funny, where they go on a mission... Uh, to repair a a space elevator, <laughs> it's a left. But anyway, um, and you know, uh, Manner's talking about how great it's going to be to go on the planet and hang out with all these you know relaxing aliens who just want to pamper them. And and um, uh, God, what's the guy's name? Ransom, of course, is kind of like wants to put her in her place. So it's like. Flat out says, no, you can't do it. We're going to do the repairs, and the engineers are going to go down to the planet and hang out with the aliens, which, of course, makes no sense. Which is what bothered me about the storyline of how obtuse that Ransom was being. I know it's for comedic effect, but it makes him like a really terrible commander, like a really terrible Starfleet officer. Just like, well, there's other cases where I thought Captain Freeman was a, a terrible captain. But, you know is under the guise of, of comedy, but I don't know. For me, Lower Decks has to strike the, light, the right balance between silly comedy and, you know, serious storytelling, and this is leans too heavily towards silly nonsense. Just in my humble, but as I said, it's not a big deal. Now, so we see, because it was funny when we see um, Rutherford and the Billups on the planet getting pampered <laughs> and, and Ransom keeps like fucking up the repairs because he doesn't know what he's doing he's acting like he doesn't need the engineers um and there was um this was something I saw in the trailer of uh you know Billups and um Rutherford being pampered by those you know hot looking aliens and um uh, Ransom saying, it had like the voiceover of him saying, Starfleet isn't all just hanging out and getting pampered by aliens with, you know, hot aliens with ridges or whatever. Um, and I, when I saw the trailer, I compared it to the episode Justice. Um, I thought, oh, they're kind of parroting that episode Justice from Next Generation when they had those, you know, 80s looking hot people running around in clothes that barely, barely covered their private parts. But anyway, um, so I thought they were like going to do a parody off of that. But then when I started watching this episode, I was like, oh no, this is totally not Justice. Um, but then when we got towards the end of the episode, I was like, actually this kind of is justice um because the, the thing in justice is that we're hanging out with all these sexy aliens and having a great time but then all of a sudden there's a silly law that they broke in there and one of the crew members was going to be executed and that's exactly what happened here where apparently they just did something innocuous that they wanted to murder them and throw them to the volcano gods uh, so i think this they were parroting uh, justice however they were parroting more than just justice because because the um, 
the whole thing with the um, the angry like telepathic baby, <laughs> um, and then they had the supercomputer that, and it reminded me of the, actually of the episode Apple because I the Apple from the original series because I think the aliens look most like those uh, the aliens that were in that episode the Apple, and then they had a supercomputer just like you know Vol I think it was in the Apple, but the supercomputer sounded more like Landry, and it was funny it reminded me of those supercomputers that we saw in the last. Uh, season the episode where Jeffrey Combs did a voiceover of a supercomputer and they had that whole Starfleet thing where each one was stuck in there so somehow it got out of that thing uh, I think that was in the Daystrom Institute it, it escaped somehow but anyway <laughs> it was a supercomputer and a telepathic baby or something it, yeah it just got over the top ridiculous which actually I liked I thought that, that part was really funny the main thing I didn't like is Ransom being so, so obtuse and saying no we're even when like Rutherford and Bills were about to be sacrificed at Volcano oh no just tell them that you're fine like just tell them you're Starfleet and you don't interfere that is OBR oh all good like it was kind of funny but that's just way ridiculous <laughs> it doesn't make him a, uh, a terrible commander but I did kind of like how Mariner was like all right I'm going off my and she starts like skydiving down and ran some calls you know what you're right you're totally right we should go down and do that and thank you because I thought you were gonna go all rogue and go in yourself but you proved me wrong by not doing that <laughs> And then she had to like climb up all these stairs, like climb up like a rock climbing wall in order to get back. And she was completely exhausted. And, and she was like, no, I was just waiting here the whole time for you. Um, so yeah. So it was funny. And then the one Ransom, when he comes down, takes his shirt off and they're like, <coughs> see how hot he is. And like, oh, you're gone. That part was kind of dumb. Like, I don't know. But, um. Yeah, so I don't know about this whole Ransom uh, Mariner matchup and how he's, like, you know, watching everything she does. It seems kind of more the same of what they've done in previous seasons, and it's not particularly funny. But, you know, it was, it was I, I guess it was fine in this episode. Uh, and then, of course, there was a whole through um, book ending where they had uh, Martok um be, apparently it was a narrated like board game that they were playing it was narrated by Martok it was uh, something that they they said they bought it for Ferengi, it a Ferengi game so that's why I kept trying to charge them extra money to keep playing <laughs> kind of making fun of those uh, online games that like you play but it keeps asking to buy shit and you have to buy expansions to keep playing um, I'm disappointed because I saw Martok was in the trailer and I was like, well, that's it? He's just going to be a narrator in a game? Like, I thought he would just pop out of nowhere like Q did in season one. But whatever. I mean, that, that whole thing was fine, I guess. Or was it Boimler was going to stop saying yes to everything because when he played the game, he got like, he's like, yes, I'm going to go to the nearest clan and demand thing. And he got killed immediately. And it was that death had no honor. So maybe that was the end of his saying yes. But anyway, my rating for the least dangerous game uh, out of 10 is a 7. Uh, very good. Uh, as I said, solid episode. Parts of it were funny. I liked the hunting guy. <laughs> it was pretty funny how he took pictures at the end, but other parts were a bit too silly for me. Um, so, But overall, really great, solid link in the chain. So we'll see uh, We'll see what, uh, Lower Deck, what else Lower Decks has in store for us. So that's it for my review of Star Trek Lower Decks Season 3, Episode 2. I will be back next week and every week thereafter <coughs> to continuing covering uh, Lower Decks. I also cover other shows on my channel. I do a live uh, stream for um, House of the Dragon every Monday night. And also do live streams over on uh, these reviews um, for She-Hulk. And also... Um, pre-recorded reviews for uh, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, which I believe I will start uh, in a couple of days. And also do a lots of other Star Trek uh, videos on my channel, so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.